Philippines, Wikipedia article audio. Coordinates, 13 degrees north 122 degrees east. Slash, 13 degrees north 122 degrees east. Slash 13, 122. Etymology. The Philippines, Filipino, Pilipinas or Filipinas, officially the Republic of the Philippines is a unitary sovereign and archipelagic country in Southeast Asia. Situated in the Western Pacific Ocean, it consists of about 7,641 islands that are categorized broadly under three main geographical divisions from north to south, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. The capital city of the Philippines is Manila and the most populous city is Quezon City, both part of Metro Manila. Bounded by the South China Sea on the west, the Philippine Sea on the east and the Celebes Sea on the southwest, the Philippines shares maritime borders with Taiwan to the north, Vietnam to the west, Palau to the east and Malaysia and Indonesia to the south. The Philippines' location on the Pacific Ring of Fire and close to the equator makes the Philippines prone to earthquakes and typhoons, but also endows it with abundant natural resources and some of the world's greatest biodiversity. The Philippines has an area of 343,448 square kilometers and, as of 2015, had a population of at least 100 million. As of January 2018, it was the 8th most populated country in Asia and the 12th most populated country in the world. Approximately 10 million additional Filipinos lived overseas, comprising one of the world's largest diasporas. Multiple ethnicities and cultures are found throughout the islands. In prehistoric times, Negritos were some of the archipelago's earliest inhabitants. They were followed by successive waves of Austronesian peoples. Exchanges with Chinese, Malay, Indian, and Islamic nations occurred. Then, various competing maritime states were established under the rule of Datis, Rajas, Sultans, or Lakans. History the arrival of Ferdinand Magellan, a Portuguese explorer leading a fleet for the Spanish, in Hamanhan, eastern Samar in 1521 marked the beginning of Hispanic colonization. In 1543, Spanish explorer Rui López de Villalobos named the archipelago Las Islas Filipinas in honor of Philip II of Spain. With the arrival of Miguel López de Legazpi from Mexico City, in 1565, the first Hispanic settlement in the archipelago was established. The Philippines became part of the Spanish Empire for more than 300 years. This resulted in Catholicism becoming the dominant religion. During this time, Manila became the western hub of the trans-Pacific trade connecting Asia with Acapulco in the Americas using Manila galleons. Prehistory As the 19th century gave way to the 20th, the Philippine Revolution quickly followed, which then spawned the short-lived First Philippine Republic, followed by the bloody Philippine-American War. Aside from the period of Japanese occupation, the United States retained sovereignty over the islands until after World War II, when the Philippines was recognized as an independent nation. Since then, the Philippines has often had a tumultuous experience with democracy, which included the overthrow of a dictatorship by a nonviolent revolution. Pre-colonial epoch It is a founding member of the United Nations. World Trade Organization, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, and the East Asia Summit. 
It also hosts the headquarters of the Asian Development Bank. The Philippines is considered to be an emerging market and a newly industrialized country, which has an economy transitioning from being based on agriculture to one based more on services and manufacturing. It is one of the only two predominantly Christian nations in Southeast Asia, the other being East Timor. Early Historic Coastal Polities The Philippines was named in honor of King Philip II of Spain. Spanish explorer Rui López de Villalobos, during his expedition in 1542, named the islands of Leyte and Samar Felipinas after the then Prince of Asturias. Eventually the name Las Islas Filipinas would be used to cover all the islands of the archipelago. Before that became commonplace, other names such as Islas del Poniente and Magellan's name for the islands San Lazaro were also used by the Spanish to refer to the islands. Colonial Era The official name of the Philippines has changed several times in the course of its history. During the Philippine Revolution, the Malolos Congress proclaimed the establishment of the Republica Filipina or the Philippine Republic. From the period of the Spanish-American War and the Philippine-American War until the Commonwealth period, American colonial authorities referred to the country as the Philippine Islands, a translation of the Spanish name. From the 1898 Treaty of Paris, the name Philippines began to appear and it has since become the country's common name. Since the end of World War II, the official name of the country has been the Republic of the Philippines. The Metatarsal of the Callao Man, reliably dated by uranium series dating to 67,000 years ago is the oldest human remnant found in the archipelago to date. This distinction previously belonged to the Taban Man of Palawan, carbon dated to around 26,500 years ago. Negritos were also among the archipelago's earliest inhabitants, but their first settlement in the Philippines has not been reliably dated. Spanish Rule American Rule Japanese Rule Post-colonial period There are several opposing theories regarding the origins of ancient Filipinos. F. Landa Jocano theorizes that the ancestors of the Filipinos evolved locally. Wilhelm Solheim's island origin theory postulates that the peopling of the archipelago transpired via trade networks originating in the Sund Island area around 48,000 to 5,000 BC rather than by wide-scale migration. The Austronesian expansion theory explains that Malayo-Polynesians coming from Taiwan began migrating to the Philippines around 4,000 BC, displacing earlier arrivals. The most widely accepted theory, based on linguistic and archaeological evidence, is the Out of Taiwan model, which hypothesizes that Austronesians from Taiwan, who were themselves descended from the Neolithic civilizations of the Yangtze River such as the Liangzhu culture, began migrating to the Philippines around 4000 BC, displacing earlier arrivals. During the Neolithic period, a jade culture is said to have existed as evidenced by tens of thousands of exquisitely crafted jade artifacts found in the Philippines dated to 2000 BC. The jade is said to have originated nearby in Taiwan and is also found in many other areas in insular and mainland Southeast Asia. These artifacts are said to be evidence of long-range communication between prehistoric Southeast Asian societies. By 1000 BC, the inhabitants of the archipelago had developed into four kinds of social groups, hunter-gatherer tribes, warrior societies, highland plutocracies, and port principalities. The current demarcation between the prehistory and the early history of the Philippines is April 21, 900, 
which is the equivalent on the proleptic Gregorian calendar for the date indicated on the Laguna copper plate inscription the earliest known surviving written record to come from the Philippines. This date came in the middle of what anthropologists refer to as the Philippines' emergent phase, which was characterized by newly emerging socio-cultural patterns, the initial development of large coastal settlements, greater social stratification and specialization, and the beginnings of local and international trade. By the 1300s, a number of the large coastal settlements had become progressive trading centers, and became the focal point of societal changes, ushering complex lifeways which characterized what F. Landa Jocano called the Berenjic phase of early Philippine history, beginning from the 14th century through the arrival of Spanish colonizers and the beginning of the Philippines' colonial period. The discovery of iron at around the 1st century AD created significant social and economic changes which allowed settlements to grow larger and develop new social patterns, characterized by social stratification and specialization. Some of these polities, particularly the coastal settlements at or near the mouths of large rivers, eventually developed substantial trade contacts with the early trading powers of Southeast Asia, most importantly the Indianized kingdoms of Malaysia and Java, the various dynasties of China, Thailand, and later, the Muslim Sultanate of Brunei. They also traded with Vietnam, Japan, and other Austronesian islands. Based on archaeological findings, Trade with China is believed to have begun in the Tang dynasty, but grew more extensive during the Song dynasty. By the second millennium CE, some Philippine polities were known to have sent trade delegations which participated in the tributary system enforced by the Chinese imperial court. These tributary states nominally acknowledged the Sinocentric system which saw China and the imperial court as the cultural center of the world. Among the early Philippine polities, this arrangement fulfilled the requirements for trade with China, but did not actually translate into political or military control. Regarding the relations of early Philippine polities with the various state-level polities of Indonesia and Malaysia, legendary accounts often mention the interaction of early Philippine polities with the Srivijaya Empire, but there is not much archaeological evidence to definitively support such a relationship. Considerable evidence exists, on the other hand, for extensive trade with the Majapahit Empire. The exact scope and mechanisms of Indian cultural influences on early Philippine polities are still the subject of some debate among Southeast Asian historiographers, but the current scholarly consensus is that there was probably little or no direct trade between India and the Philippines, and Indian cultural traits, such as linguistic terms and religious practices, filtered in during the 10th through the early 14th centuries through early Philippine polities relations with the Hindu Majapahit Empire. The Philippine archipelago is thus one of the countries, just at the outer edge of what is considered the greater Indian cultural zone. The early polities of the Philippine archipelago were typically characterized by a three-tier social structure. Although different cultures had different terms to describe them, this three-tier structure invariably consisted of an apex nobility class, a class of freemen, and a class of dependent debtor bondsmen called a lipan or oripun. Among the members of the nobility class were leaders who held the political office of datu, which was responsible for leading autonomous social groups called barangay or dolohan. Whenever these barangays banded together, either to form a larger settlement or a geographically looser alliance group, the more senior or respected among them would be recognized as a paramount datu, variedly called a lakan, sultan, raja, or simply a more senior datu. 
The earliest historical record of these kingdoms is the Laguna Copper Plate inscription, which indirectly refers to the Tagalog polity of Tonda and two to three other settlements believed to be located somewhere near Tonda, as well as a settlement near Mt. Diwata in Mindanao, and the temple complex of Medang in Java. Although the precise political relationships between these polities is unclear in the text of the inscription, the artifact is usually accepted as evidence of intra- and inter-regional political linkages as early as 900 CE. By the arrival of the earliest European ethnographers during the 1500s, Tonda was led by the paramount ruler called A. Lakin. It had grown into a major trading hub sharing a monopoly with the Rajanate of Manila over the trade of Ming dynasty products throughout the archipelago. This trade was significant enough that the Yongle Emperor appointed a Chinese governor named Kocha Lao to oversee it. The next historical record referred a location in the Philippines is Volume 186 of Official History of the Song Dynasty which describes the country of Ma'ai. Song dynasty traders visited Ma'ai annually, and their accounts described Ma'ai's geography, trade products, and the trade behaviors of its rulers. Because the descriptions of Ma'ai's location in these accounts are not clear, there is some dispute about Ma'ai's possible location, with some scholars believing it was located in Bay, Laguna, and others believing it was on the island of Mindoro. The official history of the Song dynasty next refers to the Rajanate of Butuan in northeastern Mindanao which is the first polity from the Philippine archipelago recorded as having sent a tribute mission to the Chinese Empire on March 17, 1001 CE. Butuan attained prominence under the rule of Raja Sri Bhattasheja, who was from a Buddhist ruling class governing a Hindu nation. This state became powerful due to the local goldsmith industry and it also had commercial ties and a diplomatic rivalry with the Kampa civilization. The Kidechuan of Majaaz was founded following a civil war in collapsing Srivahia, wherein loyalists of the Malay Datus of Srivahia defied the invading Chola dynasty and its puppet Raja, called Makatuneo, and set up a guerrilla state in the islands of the Visayas. Its founding Datu, Pudi, had purchased land for his new realms from the aboriginal ATI hero, Marikudo. Majaaz was founded on Panay Island. Afterwards, the people of Majaaz often raided the port cities of southern China and warred with the Chinese navy. The Rajanate of Cebu was a neighbor of Majaaz in the Visayas led by Rajamuda Sri Lumei a monarch with partial Tamil descent. This state grew wealthy by making use of the inter-island shipping within the archipelago. Both the Rajanates of Butuan and Cebu were allied to each other and they also maintained contact and had trade routes with Qutai, a Hindu country in South Borneo established by Indian traders. The earliest legendary date mentioning the Rajanate of Manila on the island of Luzon across the Pasig River from Tonda has to do with the naval victory of the Bruneian Raja Ahmed over the Majapahit Raja of Virjurkia, who ruled a prior pre-Muslim settlement in the same location. Chinese records of this period also mention a polity called Luzon. This is believed to be a reference to Manila since Portuguese and Spanish accounts from the 1520s explicitly state that Lucan and Manila were one and the same, although some historians argue that since none of these observers actually visited Manila, Lucan may simply have referred to all the Tagalog and Kapampangan polities that rose up on the shores of Manila Bay. Either way, from the early 1500s to as late as the 1560s, this seafaring people was referred to in Portuguese Malacca as Lucos, and they participated in trading ventures and military campaigns in Burma, Malacca, and Eastern Timor where they were employed as traders and mercenaries. In northern Luzon, 
Cabo Lone sent emissaries to China in 1406-1411, and it also traded with Japan. The 1300s saw the arrival and eventual spread of Islam in the Philippine archipelago. In 1380, Karim ul Makdam and Shariful Hashim Syed Abu Bakr, an Arab trader born in Johor, arrived in Sulu from Malacca and established the Sultanate of Sulu by converting Sulu's Raja, Raja Baguinda Ali, and marrying his daughter. At the end of the 15th century, Sheriff Mohammed Kabungsawan of Johor introduced Islam in the island of Mindanao and established the Sultanate of Magindanao. The Sultanate form of government extended further into Lano. Islam then started to spread out of Mindanao in the south and went into Luzon in the north. Manila in Luzon was Islamized during the reign of Sultan Bolkiah in 1485 to 1521. This was accomplished because the Sultanate of Brunei subjugated Tonda by defeating Raja Gambang in battle and thereafter installing the Muslim Raja, Raja Salalila to the throne and by establishing the Bruneian puppet state of the Rajanate of Manila. Sultan Bolkiah also married Lila Mekana, the daughter of Sulu Sultan Amir Alhambra to expand Brunei's influence in both Luzon and Mindanao. The Muslims then proceeded to wage wars and conduct slave raids against the Visayans. Participating in the Muslim raids, the Sultanate of Ternate consequently destroyed the key Dechuan of Dapitan in Bohol. The Hindu Rajanates of Butuan and Cebu also endured slave raids from, and waged wars against the Sultanate of Magindanao. Simultaneous with these slave raids, was the rebellion of Datu Lapu Lapu of Mactan against Raja Humaban of Cebu. There was also a simmering territorial conflict between the polity of Tonda and the Bruneian vassal state, the Islamic Rajanate of Manila to which the ruler of Manila, Raja Matanda, sought military assistance against Tonda from his relatives at the Sultanate of Brunei. The rivalries between the Datas, Rajas, Sultans, and Lakans eventually eased Spanish colonization. Furthermore, the islands were sparsely populated due to consistent natural disasters and inter-kingdom conflicts. Therefore, Colonization was made easy and the small states of the archipelago quickly became incorporated into the Spanish Empire and were Hispanicized and Christianized. Journalist Alan Robles has opined, colonialism created the Philippines, shaped its political culture and continues to influence its mindset. The 333 years under Spain and nearly five decades under the USA decisively molded the nation. Anthropologist Prospero Kovar has observed, our thinking, culture, and psychology became virtually westernized, when we were, in fact, Asians. In 1521, Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan's expedition arrived in the Philippines, claimed the islands for Spain and was then killed at the Battle of Mactan. Colonization began when Spanish explorer Miguel López de Legazpi arrived from Mexico in 1565 and formed the first Hispanic settlements in Cebu. After relocating to Panay Island and consolidating a coalition of native Visayan allies, Hispanic soldiers, and Latin American recruits, the Spaniards then invaded Islamic Manila, therein they put down the Tonda conspiracy and exiled the conspirators to Guam and Guerrero. Under Spanish rule, they established Manila as the capital of the Spanish East Indies. They also defeated the Chinese warlord Limahong. To counteract the Islamization of the Philippines, the Spanish then conducted the Castilian War which was aimed against the Sultanate of Brunei and war was also waged against the Sultanate of Ternate and Tidore. The Spanish considered their war with the Muslims in Southeast Asia an extension of the Reconquista, 
a centuries-long campaign to retake and re-Christianize the Spanish homeland which was invaded by the Muslims of the Umayyad Caliphate. The Spanish expeditions into the Philippines were also part of a larger Ibero-Islamic world conflict that included a rivalry with the Ottoman Caliphate which had a center of operations at its nearby vassal, the Sultanate of Aset. Consequently, fortifications were also set up in Taiwan and the Malyaku Islands. These were abandoned and the Spanish soldiers, along with the newly Christianized Papuan natives of the Moluccas, withdrew back to the Philippines in order to reconcentrate their military forces because of a threatened invasion by the Japan-born Ming dynasty loyalist, Koxinga, ruler of the Kingdom of Tungning. However, the planned invasion was aborted. Meanwhile, settlers were sent to the Pacific islands of Palau and the Marianas. Contemporary History Spanish rule eventually contributed significantly to bringing political unity to the fragmented states of the archipelago. From 1565 to 1821, the Philippines was governed as a territory of the Mexico-based Viceroyalty of New Spain and then was administered directly from Madrid after the Mexican War of Independence. The Manila Galleons, the largest wooden ships ever built, were constructed in Baikal and Cavita. The Manila Galleons were accompanied with a large naval escort as it traveled to and from Manila and Acapulco. The Galleons sailed once or twice a year, between the 16th and 19th centuries. The Manila Galleons brought with them goods, settlers, and military reinforcements destined for the Philippines from Latin America. Trade introduced foodstuffs such as maize, tomatoes, potatoes, chili peppers, chocolate and pineapples from Mexico and Peru. Within the Philippines, the Marquisate of Buglas was established and the rule of it was awarded to Sebastian Elcano and his crew, the survivors of the first circumnavigation of the world, as well as his descendants. New towns were also created and Catholic missionaries converted most of the lowland inhabitants to Christianity. They also founded schools, a university, hospitals, and churches which were built along the earthquake Baroque architectural style. To defend their settlements, the Spaniards constructed and manned a network of military fortresses across the archipelago. The Spanish also decreed the introduction of free public schooling in 1863. As a result of these policies the Philippine population increased exponentially. During its rule, Spain quelled various indigenous revolts. There were also several external military challenges from Chinese and Japanese pirates, the Dutch, the English the Portuguese and the Muslims of Southeast Asia. Those challengers were fought off despite the hostile forces having encircled the Philippine archipelago in a crescent formed from Japan to Indonesia. British forces occupied Manila from 1762 to 1764 in an extension of the fighting of the Seven Years' War. Spanish rule was restored following the 1763 Treaty of Paris. The Spanish-Moro conflict lasted for several hundred years. In the last quarter of the 19th century, Spain conquered portions of Mindanao and the Moro Muslims in the Sulu Sultanate formally recognized Spanish sovereignty. In the 19th century, Philippine ports opened to world trade and shifts started occurring within Filipino society. Many Spaniards born in the Philippines and those of mixed ancestry became wealthy and an influx of Latin American immigrants opened up government positions traditionally held by Spaniards born in the Iberian Peninsula. The ideals of revolution also began to spread through the islands. 
Criollo dissatisfaction resulted in the 1872 Cavita mutiny that was a precursor to the Philippine Revolution. Revolutionary sentiments were stoked in 1872 after three priests Mariano Gomez, José Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora were accused of sedition by colonial authorities and executed. This would inspire a propaganda movement in Spain, organized by Marcelo H. del Pilar, José Rizal, and Mariano Ponce, lobbying for political reforms in the Philippines. Rizal was eventually executed on December 30, 1896, on charges of rebellion. As attempts at reform met with resistance, Andres Bonifacio in 1892 established the secret society called the Catapanan, who sought independence from Spain through armed revolt. Bonifacio and the Catapanan started the Philippine Revolution in 1896. A faction of the Catapanan, the Magdalo of Cavita province, eventually came to challenge Bonifacio's position as the leader of the revolution and Emilio Aguinaldo took over. In 1898, the Spanish-American War began in Cuba and reached the Philippines. Aguinaldo declared Philippine independence from Spain in Cavite, Cavita on June 12, 1898, and the first Philippine Republic was established in the Barisoa Church in the following year. The islands were ceded by Spain to the United States as a result of the latter's victory in the Spanish-American War. A compensation of 20 million U.S. dollars was paid to Spain according to the terms of the 1898 Treaty of Paris. As it became increasingly clear the United States would not recognize the nascent First Philippine Republic, the Philippine-American War broke out, the First Republic was defeated, and the archipelago was administered under an insular government. The war resulted in the deaths of tens of thousands of combatants as well as a couple of hundred thousand civilians, mostly from a cholera epidemic. Politics The Americans then suppressed other rebellious sub-states, mainly, the waning Sultanate of Sulu, as well as the insurgent Tagalog Republic, the Cantonal Republic of Negros in the Visayas, and the Republic of Samboanga in Mindanao. During this era, a renaissance in Philippine culture occurred, with the expansion of Philippine cinema and literature. Daniel Burnham built an architectural plan for Manila which would have transformed it into a modern city. In 1935, the Philippines was granted Commonwealth status with Manuel Quezon as president. He designated a national language and introduced women's suffrage and land reform. Foreign Relations Military Administrative Divisions Administrative Regions Geography Plans for independence over the next decade were interrupted by World War II when the Japanese Empire invaded and the Second Philippine Republic of José P. Laurel was established as a collaborator state. Many atrocities and war crimes were committed during the war such as the Bataan Death March and the Manila Massacre that culminated with the Battle of Manila. In 1944, Quezon died in exile in the United States and Sergio Osmina succeeded him. The Allied forces then employed a strategy of island hopping towards the Philippine archipelago, in the process, retaking territory conquered by Imperial Japan. Biodiversity From mid-1942 through mid-1944, the Filipino guerrilla resistance had been supplied and encouraged by U.S. Navy submarines and a few parachute drops, so that the guerrillas could harass the Japanese army and take control of the rural areas, jungles, and mountains. Thus, the Japanese Empire only controlled 12 out of 48 provinces. 
While remaining loyal to the United States, many Filipinos hoped and believed that liberation from the Japanese would bring them freedom and their already promised independence. Eventually, the largest naval battle in history, according to Gross Tonnage Sunk, the Battle of Leyte Gulf, occurred when Allied forces started the liberation of the Philippines from the Japanese Empire. Allied troops defeated the Japanese in 1945. By the end of the war it is estimated that over a million Filipinos had died. Climate On October 11, 1945, the Philippines became one of the founding members of the United Nations. The following year, on July 4, 1946, the Philippines was officially recognized by the United States as an independent nation through the Treaty of Manila, during the presidency of Manuel Roxas. Disgruntled remnants of the communist Huck Balahop continued to roam the countryside but were put down by President El Pidio Quirino's successor Ramon Magsaysay. Magsaysay's successor, Carlos P. Garcia, initiated the Filipino First Policy, which was continued by Diosdado Macapagal, with celebration of Independence Day moved from July 4 to June 12, the date of Emilio Aguinaldo's declaration, while furthering the claim on the eastern part of North Borneo. In 1965, Macapagal lost the presidential election to Ferdinand Marcos. Early in his presidency, Marcos initiated numerous infrastructure projects but was accused of massive corruption and embezzling billions of dollars in public funds. Nearing the end of his term, Marcos declared martial law on September 21, 1972. This period of his rule was characterized by political repression, censorship, and human rights violations but the U.S. were steadfast in their support. Economy On August 21, 1983, Marcos's chief rival, opposition leader Benigno Aquino, Jr., was assassinated on the tarmac at Manila International Airport. Marcos eventually called snap presidential elections in 1986. Marcos was proclaimed the winner, but the results were widely regarded as fraudulent, leading to the People Power Revolution. Marcos and his allies fled to Hawaii and Aquino's widow, Corazon Aquino was recognized as president. The return of democracy and government reforms beginning in 1986 were hampered by national debt, government corruption, coup attempts, disasters, a persistent communist insurgency, and a military conflict with Moro separatists. During Corazon Aquino's administration, U.S. forces withdrew from the Philippines, due to the rejection of the U.S. Bases Extension Treaty and leading to the official transfer of Clark Air Base in November 1991 and Subic Bay to the government in December 1992. The administration also faced a series of natural disasters, including the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in June 1991. After introducing a constitution that limited presidents to a single term, Aquino did not stand for re-election. Transportation Aquino was succeeded by Fidel V. Ramos, who won the Philippine presidential election held in May 1992. During this period the country's economic performance remained modest, with a 3.6% GDP growth rate. However, the political stability and economic improvements, such as the peace agreement with the Moro National Liberation Front in 1996, were overshadowed by the onset of the 1997 Asian financial crisis. 
On his presidency the death penalty was revived in the light of the rape slay case of Eileen Sarmiento and Alan Gomez in 1993 and the first person to be executed was Leo Eshgaray in 1999. Ramos' successor, Joseph Estrada assumed office in June 1998 and managed to regain the economy from minus 0.6% growth to 3.4% by 1999 amidst the 1997 Asian financial crisis. The government had announced a war against the Moro Islamic Liberation Front in March 2000 and neutralized the camps including the headquarters of the insurgents. In the middle of ongoing conflict with the Abu Sayyaf, accusations of alleged corruption, and a stalled impeachment process, Estrada's administration was overthrown by the 2001 EDSA revolution and succeeded by his vice president, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo on January 20, 2001. Science and Technology in Arroyo's nine-year administration, the economy experienced a phenomenal growth of 4 to 7 percent averaging at 5.33 percent from 2002 to 2007 with the completion of infrastructure projects like LRT Line 2 in 2004 and managed to avoid the Great Recession. By comparison, the Philippines has been growing an average of 3.6% from 1965 to 2001 or 3.5% if we include only those years when democracy was already achievement in the Philippines on 1986. The improvement of the Philippine annual growth rate from her predecessors was around 1.7-1.87%. And this jump start from a sluggish economy for almost five decades that left it behind by its neighbors in the 1960s would prove to be the Philippines' rise from being the sick man of Asia to become one of the tiger cub economy for the next decade after her administration. Nevertheless, it was tied with graft and political scandals like the Hello Garcia scandal pertaining to the alleged manipulation of votes in the 2004 presidential elections. On November 23, 2009, the Megan Daneo massacre led to the murder of 34 journalists. Communications Benigno Aquino III won the 2010 national elections and served as the 15th President of the Philippines. The first major issue he dealt with was the 2010 Manila hostage crisis that caused deeply strained relations between Manila and Hong Kong for a time. The framework agreement on the Bank Samoro was signed on October 15, 2012, as the first step of the creation of an autonomous political entity named Bank Samoro. However, territorial disputes in eastern Sabah and the South China Sea have escalated. On May 15, 2013, the Philippines implemented the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013, commonly known as K-12 program. It added two more years to the country's 10-year schooling system for primary and secondary education. On November 8, 2013, Typhoon Yolanda struck and heavily devastated the country, especially in the Visayas. When the United States President Barack Obama visited the Philippines on April 28, 2014, the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, was signed, paving the way for the return of United States Armed Forces bases into the country. On January 25, 2015, 44 members of the Philippine National Police, Special Action Force were killed after a clash took place in Mama Sapano, Megan Daneo putting efforts to pass the Bank Samoro Basic Law into law in an impasse. Former Davao City Mayor Rodrigo Duterte of PDP Laban won the 2016 presidential election becoming the first president from Mindanao. On July 12, 2016, 
the Permanent Court of Arbitration ruled in favor of the Philippines in its case against China's claims in the South China Sea. After winning the presidency, Duterte launched an intensified anti-drug campaign to fulfill a campaign promise of wiping out criminality in six months. By March 2017, the death toll for the Philippine drug war passed 8,000 people, with 2,679 killed in legitimate police operations and the rest the government claims to be homicide cases. Tourism Duterte initiated the Build, Build, Build program, which aims to usher the Philippines into a new golden age of infrastructure. It will create more jobs and business opportunities, which, in turn, would sustain the country's economic growth and accelerate poverty reduction. The construction industry needs 2 million more workers to sustain the program. Water Supply and Sanitation The Build, Build, Build program is made up of 75 projects, which includes 6 air transport projects, 12 rail transport projects, and 4 water transport projects. It also includes 4 major flood management projects, 11 water supply and irrigation projects, 4 power projects, and three other public infrastructure projects. The Philippines is expected to spend $160 billion to $180 billion up to 2022 for the public investments in infrastructure. The Philippines has a democratic government in the form of a constitutional republic with a presidential system. It is governed as a unitary state with the exception of the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, which is largely free from the national government. There have been attempts to change the government to a federal, unicameral, or parliamentary government since the Ramos administration. Demographics The president functions as both head of state and head of government and is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. The president is elected by popular vote for a single six-year term, during which he or she appoints and presides over the cabinet. The bicameral Congress is composed of the Senate, serving as the upper house, with members elected to a six-year term, and the House of Representatives, serving as the lower house, with members elected to a three-year term. Senators are elected at large while the representatives are elected from both legislative districts and through sectoral representation. The judicial power is vested in the Supreme Court, composed of a chief justice as its presiding officer and 14 associate justices, all of whom are appointed by the president from nominations submitted by the Judicial and Bar Council. The Philippines' international relations are based on trade with other nations and the well-being of the 10 million overseas Filipinos living outside the country. As a founding and active member of the United Nations, the Philippines has been elected several times into the Security Council. Carlos P. Romulo was a former president of the United Nations General Assembly. The country is an active participant in the Human Rights Council as well as in peacekeeping missions, particularly in East Timor. In addition to membership in the United Nations, the Philippines is also a founding and active member of ASEAN, an organization designed to strengthen relations and promote economic and cultural growth among states in the Southeast Asian region. It has hosted several summits and is an active contributor to the direction and policies of the bloc. The Philippines values its relations with the United States. It supported the United States during the Cold War and the War on Terror and is a major non-NATO ally. Despite this history of goodwill, Controversies related to the presence of the now former U.S. military bases in Subic Bay and Clark and the current Visiting Forces Agreement have flared up from time to time. Japan, 
the biggest contributor of official development assistance to the country, is thought of as a friend. Although historical tensions still exist on issues such as the plight of comfort women, much of the animosity inspired by memories of World War II has faded. Relations with other nations are generally positive. Shared democratic values ease relations with Western and European countries while similar economic concerns help in relations with other developing countries. Historical ties and cultural similarities also serve as a bridge in relations with Spain. Despite issues such as domestic abuse and war affecting overseas Filipino workers, Relations with Middle Eastern countries are friendly as seen in the continuous employment of more than 2 million overseas Filipinos living there. With communism no longer the threat it once was, once hostile relations in the 1950s between the Philippines and China have improved greatly. Issues involving Taiwan, the Spratly Islands, and concerns of expanding Chinese influence, however, still encourage a degree of caution. Recent foreign policy has been mostly about economic relations with its Southeast Asian and Asia-Pacific neighbors. The Philippines is an active member of the East Asia Summit, the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, the Latin Union, the Group of 24, and the Non-Aligned Movement. It is also seeking to strengthen relations with Islamic countries by campaigning for observer status in the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. The armed forces of the Philippines are responsible for national security and consist of three branches, the Philippine Air Force, the Philippine Army, and the Philippine Navy. The armed forces of the Philippines are a volunteer force. Civilian security is handled by the Philippine National Police under the Department of the Interior and Local Government. In the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, the largest separatist organization, the Moro National Liberation Front, is now engaging the government politically. Other more militant groups like the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, the Communist New People's Army, and the Abu Sayyaf have previously kidnapped foreigners for ransom, particularly on the southern island of Mindanao. Their presence decreased due to successful security provided by the Philippine government. At 1.1% of GDP, the Philippines spent less on its military forces than the regional average. As of 2014 Malaysia and Thailand were estimated to spend 1.5%, China 2.1%, Vietnam 2.2% and South Korea 2.6%. The Philippines has been an ally of the United States since World War II. A mutual defense treaty between the two countries was signed in 1951. The Philippines supported American policies during the Cold War and participated in the Korean and Vietnam Wars. It was a member of the now dissolved CETO, a group that was intended to serve a role similar to NATO and that included Australia, France, New Zealand, Pakistan, Thailand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. After the start of the War on Terror, the Philippines was part of the coalition that gave support to the United States in Iraq. Cities The Philippines is divided into three island groups, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. These are further divided into 17 regions, 81 provinces, 145 cities, 1,489 municipalities, and 42,036 barangays. In addition, Section 2 of Republic Act No. 5446 asserts that the definition of the territorial sea around the Philippine archipelago does not affect the claim over the eastern part of Sabah. Ethnic Groups 
Regions in the Philippines are administrative divisions that serve primarily to organize the provinces of the country for administrative convenience. The Philippines is divided into 17 regions. Most government offices are established by region instead of individual provincial offices, usually in the city designated as the regional center. As of 2015, Calabarzon was the most populated region while the national capital region the most densely populated. Languages The Philippines is an archipelago composed of about 7,641 islands with a total land area, including inland bodies of water, of 343,448 square kilometers. The 36,289 kilometers of coastline makes it the country with the fifth longest coastline in the world. It is located between 116 degrees 40 minutes and 126 degrees 34 minutes east longitude and 4 degrees 40 minutes and 21 degrees 10 minutes north latitude and is bordered by the Philippine Sea to the east, the South China Sea to the west and the Celebes Sea to the south. The island of Borneo is located a few hundred kilometers southwest and Taiwan is located directly to the north. The Moluccas and Sulawesi are located to the south-southwest and Palau is located to the east of the islands. Religion Most of the mountainous islands are covered in tropical rainforest and volcanic in origin. The highest mountain is Mount Apo. It measures up to 2,954 meters above sea level and is located on the island of Mindanao. The Galathea depth in the Philippine Trench is the deepest point in the country and the third deepest in the world. The trench is located in the Philippine Sea. Health Education Culture Architecture Music Dance Visual Art The longest river is the Cagayan River in northern Luzon. Manila Bay, upon the shore of which the capital city of Manila lies, is connected to Laguna de Bay, the largest lake in the Philippines, by the Pasig River. Subic Bay, the Davao Gulf, and the Moro Gulf are other important bays. The San Juanico Strait separates the islands of Samar and Leyte but it is traversed by the San Juanico Bridge. Situated on the western fringes of the Pacific Ring of Fire, the Philippines experiences frequent seismic and volcanic activity. The Benham Plateau to the east in the Philippine Sea is an undersea region active in tectonic subduction. Around 20 earthquakes are registered daily, though most are too weak to be felt. The last major earthquake was the 1990 Luzon earthquake. There are many active volcanoes such as the Mayon Volcano, Mount Pinatubo, and Tall Volcano. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo in June 1991 produced the second largest terrestrial eruption of the 20th century. Not all notable geographic features are so violent or destructive. A more serene legacy of the geological disturbances is the Puerto Princesa subterranean river, the area represents a habitat for biodiversity conservation, the site also contains a full mountain to the sea ecosystem and has some of the most important forests in Asia. Due to the volcanic nature of the islands, mineral deposits are abundant. The country is estimated to have the second largest gold deposits after South Africa and one of the largest copper deposits in the world. It is also rich in nickel, chromite, and zinc. Despite this, poor management, high population density, and environmental consciousness have resulted in these mineral resources remaining largely untapped. Geothermal energy is a product of volcanic activity that the Philippines has harnessed more successfully. 
The Philippines is the world's second biggest geothermal producer behind the United States, with 18% of the country's electricity needs being met by geothermal power. The Philippines' rhine forests and its extensive coastlines make it home to a diverse range of birds, plants, animals, and sea creatures. It is one of the ten most biologically megadiverse countries. Around 1,100 land vertebrate species can be found in the Philippines including over 100 mammal species and 170 bird species not thought to exist elsewhere. The Philippines has among the highest rates of discovery in the world with 16 new species of mammals discovered in the last 10 years. Because of this, the rate of endemism for the Philippines has risen and likely will continue to rise. Native mammals include the palm civet cat, the dugong, the cloud rat and the Philippine tarsia associated with bohol. Although the Philippines lacks large mammalian predators, it does have some very large reptiles such as pythons and cobras, together with gigantic saltwater crocodiles. The largest crocodile in captivity, known locally as Lalong, was captured in the southern island of Mindanao. The national bird, known as the Philippine eagle has the longest body of any eagle, it generally measures 86 to 102 centimeters in length and weighs 4.7 to 8.0 kilograms. The Philippine eagle is part of the Accipitridae family and is endemic to the rhine forests of Luzon, Samar, Leyte, and Mindanao. Philippine maritime waters encompass as much as 2,200,000 square kilometers producing unique and diverse marine life, an important part of the coral triangle. The total number of corals and marine fish species was estimated at 500 and 2,400 respectively. New records and species discoveries continuously increase these numbers underlining the uniqueness of the marine resources in the Philippines. The Tubataha Reef in the Sulu Sea was declared a World Heritage Site in 1993. Philippine waters also sustain the cultivation of pearls, crabs, and seaweeds. With an estimated 13,500 plant species in the country, 3,200 of which are unique to the islands, Philippine rhine forests boast an array of flora, including many rare types of orchids and rafflesia. Deforestation, often the result of illegal logging, is an acute problem in the Philippines. Forest cover declined from 70% of the Philippines' total land area in 1900 to about 18.3% in 1999. Many species are endangered and scientists say that Southeast Asia, which the Philippines is part of, faces a catastrophic extinction rate of 20% by the end of the 21st century. According to Conservation International, the country is one of the few nations that is, in its entirety, both a hotspot and a megadiversity country, placing it among the top priority hotspots for global conservation. The Philippines has a tropical maritime climate that is usually hot and humid. There are three seasons, Taginit or Tagera the hot dry season or summer from March to May, Tagulan, the rainy season from June to November, and Taglamig, the cool dry season from December to February. The southwest monsoon is known as the Habagat, and the dry winds of the northeast monsoon, the Amihan. Temperatures usually range from 21 degrees Celsius to 32 degrees Celsius although it can get cooler or hotter depending on the season. The coolest month is January, the warmest is May. The average yearly temperature is around 26.6 degrees Celsius. In considering temperature, location in terms of latitude and longitude is not a significant factor. Whether in the extreme north, south, east, 
or west of the country, temperatures at sea level tend to be in the same range. Altitude usually has more of an impact. The average annual temperature of Baguio at an elevation of 1,500 meters above sea level is 18.3 degrees Celsius, making it a popular destination during hot summers. Sitting astride the typhoon belt, most of the islands experience annual torrential rains and thunderstorms from July to October with around 19 typhoons entering the Philippine area of responsibility in a typical year and 8 or 9 making landfall. Annual rainfall measures as much as 5,000 mm in the mountainous east coast section but less than 1,000 mm in some of the sheltered valleys. The wettest known tropical cyclone to impact the archipelago was the July 1911 cyclone which dropped over 1,168 mm of rainfall within a 24-hour period in Baguio. Baguio is the local term for a tropical cyclone in the Philippines. The Philippine economy is the 34th largest in the world, with an estimated 2017 gross domestic product of $348.593 billion. Primary exports include semiconductors and electronic products, transport equipment, garments, copper products, petroleum products, coconut oil, and fruits. Major trading partners include the United States, Japan, China, Singapore, South Korea, the Netherlands, Hong Kong, Germany, Taiwan, and Thailand. Its unit of currency is the Philippine peso. A newly industrialized country, the Philippine economy has been transitioning from one based upon agriculture to an economy with more emphasis upon services and manufacturing. Of the country's total labor force of around 40.813 million, the agricultural sector employs 30% of the labor force, and accounts for 14% of GDP. The industrial sector employs around 14% of the workforce and accounts for 30% of GDP. Meanwhile, the 47% of workers involved in the services sector are responsible for 56% of GDP. The unemployment rate as of December 14, 2014, stands at 6.0%. Meanwhile, Due to lower charges in basic necessities, the inflation rate eases to 3.7% in November. Gross international reserves as of October 2013 are $83.201 billion. The debt-to-GDP ratio continues to decline to 38.1% as of March 2014 from a record high of 78% in 2004. The country is a net importer but it is also a creditor nation. After World War II, the Philippines was for a time regarded as the second wealthiest in East Asia, next only to Japan. In the 1960s its economic performance started being overtaken. The economy stagnated under the dictatorship of President Ferdinand Marcos as the regime spawned economic mismanagement and political volatility. The country suffered from slow economic growth and bouts of economic recession. Only in the 1990s with a program of economic liberalization did the economy begin to recover. The 1997 Asian financial crisis affected the economy resulting in a lingering decline of the value of the peso and falls in the stock market. The extent it was affected initially was not as severe as that of some of its Asian neighbors. This was largely due to the fiscal conservatism of the government, partly as a result of decades of monitoring and fiscal supervision from the International Monetary Fund, in comparison to the massive spending of its neighbors on the rapid acceleration of economic growth. There have been signs of progress since. In 2004, 
the economy experienced 6.4% GDP growth and 7.1% in 2007, its fastest pace of growth in three decades. Average annual GDP growth per capita for the period 1966-2007 still stands at 1.45% in comparison to an average of 5.96% for the East Asia and the Pacific region as a whole. The daily income for 45% of the population of the Philippines remains less than $2. The economy is heavily reliant upon remittances from overseas Filipinos, which surpass foreign direct investment as a source of foreign currency. Remittances peaked in 2010 at 10.4% 10 of the national GDP, and were 8.6% in 2012 and in 2014. Philippines' total worth of foreign exchange remittances was 28 billion US dollars. Regional development is uneven, with Luzon Metro Manila in particular gaining most of the new economic growth at the expense of the other regions, although the government has taken steps to distribute economic growth by promoting investment in other areas of the country. Despite constraints, service industries such as tourism and business process outsourcing have been identified as areas with some of the best opportunities for growth for the country goldman sachs includes the country in its list of the next 11 economies but china and india have emerged as major economic competitors goldman sachs estimates that by the year 2050 it will be the 20th largest economy in the world HSBC also projects the Philippine economy to become the 16th largest economy in the world, 5th largest economy in Asia and the largest economy in the Southeast Asian region by 2050. The Philippines is a member of the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the World Trade Organization, the Asian Development Bank which is headquartered in Mundaluyong, the Colombo Plan the G77 and the G24 among other groups and institutions. The transportation infrastructure in the Philippines is relatively underdeveloped. This is partly due to the mountainous terrain and the scattered geography of the islands, but also the result of consistently low investment in infrastructure by successive governments. In 2013, about 3% of national GDP went towards infrastructure development much lower than many of its neighbors. There are 216,387 kilometers of roads in the Philippines, with only 61,093 kilometers of roads paved. Buses, jeepneys, taxis, and motorized tricycles are commonly available in major cities and towns. In 2007, there were about 5.53 million registered motor vehicles with registrations increasing at an average annual rate of 4.55%. The Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines manages airports and implementation of policies regarding safe air travel with 85 public airports operational as of 2014. Ninoy Aquino International Airport serves the Greater Manila Area together with Clark International Airport. Philippine Airlines, Asia's oldest commercial airline still operating under its original name, and Cebu Pacific, the leading low-cost airline, are the major airlines serving most domestic and international destinations. Expressways and highways are mostly located on the island of Luzon including the Pan-Philippine Highway, connecting the islands of Luzon, Samar, Leyte, and Mindanao, the North Luzon Expressway, South Luzon Expressway, and the subic clark tarlac Expressway. Rail transport in the Philippines only plays a role in transporting passengers within Metro Manila and the province of Laguna. The region is served by three rapid transit lines, LRT-1, and LRT-2, and MRT-3. In the past, 
railways served major parts of Luzon, and railroad services were available on the islands of Cebu and Negros. Railways were also used for agricultural purposes, especially in tobacco and sugar cane production. Rail freight transportation was almost non-existent as of 2014. A few transportation systems are under development, Dust Murdk and UP are implementing pre-feasibility studies on automated guideway transit. A so-called hybrid electric road train which is a long bi-articulated bus, was also being tested as of 2015. As an archipelago, inter-island travel using watercraft is often necessary. The busiest seaports are Manila, Batangas, Subic, Cebu, Iloilo, Davao, Cagayan de Oro, and Samboanga. Tugio Travel and Sulpicio Lines serve Manila, with links to various cities and towns through passenger vessels. The 919-kilometer-strong Republic Nautical Highway, an integrated set of highway segments and ferry routes covering 17 cities was established in 2003. The Pasig River Ferry Service serves the major rivers in Metro Manila, including the Pasig River and Marikina River having numerous stops in Manila, Makati, Mundaluyong, Pasig, and Marikina. The Philippines has pursued efforts to improve the field of science and technology. The Department of Science and Technology is the governing agency responsible for the development of coordination of science and technology-related projects in the Philippines. The National Scientist of the Philippines Award is given to individuals that have contributed to different field of science in the country. Notable Filipino scientists include Maria Orosa, a food technologist famous for her formulated food products like calamansi nip, soya lac, and the banana ketchup. F. E. Del Mundo, a pediatrician whose pioneering work in pediatrics as an active medical practice spanned eight decades, Paolo Campos, a physician who was dubbed as the father of nuclear medicine in the Philippines for his contributions in the field of nuclear medicine, Ramon Barba, an inventor and horticulturist known for his method to induce more flowers in mango trees. Research organizations include the International Rice Research Institute, an international independent research and training organization established in 1960 with headquarters in Los Banos, Laguna, focusing on the development of new rice varieties and rice crop management techniques to help farmers in the country improve their lives. The Philippines bought its first satellite in 1996. In 2016, the Philippines' first microsatellite, Diwata 1 was launched aboard the U.S. Cygnus spacecraft. The Philippines has a sophisticated cellular phone industry and a high concentration of users. Text messaging is a popular form of communication and, in 2007, the nation sent an average of 1 billion SMS messages per day. Over 5 million mobile phone users also use their phones as virtual wallets making it a leader among developing nations in providing financial transactions over cellular networks. The Philippine long-distance telephone company commonly known as PLDT is the leading telecommunications provider. It is also the largest company in the country. The National Telecommunications Commission is the agency responsible for the supervision, adjudication, and control over all telecommunications services throughout the country. There are approximately 383 AM and 659 FM radio stations and 297 television and 873 cable television stations. On March 29, 1994, the country went live on the Internet via a 64kbit-s connection from a router serviced by PLDT to a Sprint router in California. 
Estimates for internet penetration in the Philippines vary widely ranging from a low of 2.5 million to a high of 24 million people. Social networking and watching videos are among the most frequent internet activities. The travel and tourism sector is a major contributor to the economy, contributing 7.1% to the Philippine GDP in 2013 and providing 1,226,500 jobs or 3.2% of total employment. 2,433,428 international visitors arrived from January to June 2014 up by 2.22% in the same period in 2013. South Korea, China, and Japan accounted for 58.78% while the Americas accounted for 19.28% and Europe 10.64%. The Department of Tourism has responsibility for the management and promotion of the tourism sector. The country's rich biodiversity is one of the main tourist attractions with its beaches, mountains, rhine forests, islands, and diving spots among the most popular tourist destinations. As an archipelago consisting of about 7,500 islands, the Philippines has numerous beaches caves and other rock formations. Boracay has glaring white sand beaches and was named as the best island in the world by travel and leisure in 2012. The Banorice Terraces in Ifugeo, the historic town of Vigan in Ilocos Sur, the Chocolate Hills in Bohol, Magellan's Cross in Cebu and the Tubataha Reef in Visayas are other highlights. The Philippines is also one of the favorite retirement destinations for foreigners due to its warm climate all year round, beaches, and low cost of living. Among the achievements of the government in the Philippines are a high access to an improved water source of 92% in 2010, the creation of financially sustainable water service providers in small and medium towns with the continuous long-term support of a national agency, and the improvement of access, service quality, and efficiency in Manila through two high-prof water concessions awarded in 1997. The challenges include limited access to sanitation services, high pollution of water resources, often poor drinking water quality and poor service quality, a fragmentation of executive functions at the national level among numerous agencies, and a fragmentation of service provision at the local level into many small service providers. In 2015 it was reported by the Joint Monitoring Program for Water Supply and Sanitation by WHO and UNICEF that 74% of the population had access to improved sanitation and that good progress had been made. The access to improved sanitation was reported to be similar for the urban and rural population. The population of the Philippines increased from 1990 to 2008 by approximately 28 million, a 45% growth in that time frame. The first official census in the Philippines was carried out in 1877 and recorded a population of 5,567,685. It is estimated that half of the population resides on the island of Luzon. The 3.21% population growth rate between 1995 and 2000 decreased to an estimated 1.95% for the 2005-2010 period, but remains a contentious issue. The population's median age is 22.7 years with 60.9% aged from 15 to 64 years old. Life expectancy at birth is 71.94 years, 75.03 years for females and 68.99 years for males. Poverty incidence significantly dropped to 21.6% in 2015 from 25.2% in 2012. 
Since the liberalization of United States immigration laws in 1965, the number of people in the United States having Filipino ancestry has grown substantially. In 2007 there were an estimated 12 million Filipinos living overseas. According to the official count the population of the Philippines hit 100 million at the time of midnight on July 27, 2014, making it the 12th country to reach this number. The Philippine population will continue to increase throughout 2018 and is projected to reach around 107,190,081 by December 31. 2018, based on projections made by the Commission on Population using the latest population census of 2015. Metro Manila is the most populous of the three defined metropolitan areas in the Philippines and the 11th most populous in the world. As of 2007, Census data showed it had a population of 11,553,427, comprising 13% of the national population. Including suburbs in the adjacent provinces of Greater Manila, the population is around 21 million. Metro Manila's gross regional product was estimated as of 2009 to be 468.4 billion and accounts for 33% of the nation's GDP. In 2011 Manila ranked as the 28th wealthiest urban agglomeration in the world and the second in Southeast Asia. According to the 2000 census, 28.1% of Filipinos are Tagalog, 13.1% Cebuano, 9% Ilocano, 7.6% Visayan slash Bisaya, 7.5% Hiligonon, 6% Baikal, 3.4% Wari, and 25.3% as others, which can be broken down further to yield more distinct non-tribal groups like the Moro, the Kapampangan, the Pongasinans, the Ibanag, and the Ivatan. There are also indigenous peoples like the Igorot, the Lumad, the Mangian, the Bajau, and the tribes of Palawan. Filipinos generally belong to several Asian ethnic groups classified linguistically as part of the Austronesian or Malayo-Polynesian speaking people. It is believed that thousands of years ago Austronesian-speaking Taiwanese Aborigines migrated to the Philippines from Taiwan bringing with them knowledge of agriculture and ocean sailing, eventually displacing the earlier Negrito groups of the islands. Negritos, such as the Ida and the Ati, are considered among the earliest inhabitants of the islands. Being at the crossroads of the west and east, the Philippines is also home to migrants from places as diverse as China, Spain, Mexico, United States, India, South Korea, and Japan. Two important non-indigenous minorities are the Chinese and the Spaniards. The Chinese, mostly descendants of immigrants from Fujian, China after 1898, number 2 million, although there are an estimated 27% of Filipinos who have partial Chinese ancestry, stemming from pre-colonial and colonial Chinese migrants. Intermarriage between the groups is evident in the major cities and urban areas. At least one-third of the population of Luzon, as well as old settlements in the Visayas and Samboanga city at Mindanao, have partial Hispanic ancestry to Spain. Recent genetic studies confirm this partial European and Latin American ancestry. Other important non-indigenous minorities include Indians, Britons, and Japanese people. The descendants of mixed-race couples are known as mestizos. Ethnologue lists 186 individual languages in the Philippines. 182 of which are living languages, while four no longer have any known speakers. 
Most native languages are part of the Philippine branch of the Malayo-Polynesian languages, which is itself a branch of the Austronesian language family. The only language not classified as an Austronesian language is Chavacano which is a Creole language of Mexican Spanish and is classified as a Romance language. Filipino and English are the official languages of the country. Filipino is a standardized version of Tagalog, spoken mainly in Metro Manila and other urban regions. Both Filipino and English are used in government, education, print, broadcast media, and business. In most towns, the local indigenous language is spoken. The Philippine Constitution provides for the promotion of Spanish and Arabic on a voluntary and optional basis, although neither are used on as wide a scale as in the past. Spanish which was widely used as a lingua franca in the late 19th century, has since declined greatly in use, but is experiencing a revival due to government promotion, while Arabic is mainly used in Islamic schools in Mindanao. However, Spanish loanwords are still present today in many of the indigenous Philippine languages. 19 Regional Languages Act as Auxiliary Official Languages Used as Mediums of Instruction, Aklanon, Baikal, Cebuano, Chavacano, Hiligonon, Ibanag, Ilocano, Ivatan, Kapampangan, Kinaraya, Magandaneo, Marineo, Pongasinan, Sambal, Surajayanan, Tagalog, Tazag, Warai, and Yakin. Other indigenous languages such as Kyanon, Ifyajao, Itbaya, Kalinga, Kameo, Kankanet, Masbatano, Romlamanan, Malay, and several Visayan languages are prevalent in their respective provinces. Languages not indigenous to the islands are also taught in select schools. Mandarin is used in Chinese schools catering to the Chinese Filipino community. Islamic schools in Mindanao teach modern standard Arabic in their curriculum. French, German, Japanese, Korean, and Spanish are taught with the help of foreign linguistic institutions. The Department of Education began teaching the Malay languages of Indonesian and Malaysian in 2013. The Philippines is an officially secular state, although Christianity is the dominant faith. Census data from 2010 found that about 80.58% of the population professed Catholicism. Around 37% regularly attend Mass and 29% identify as very religious. Protestants are 10.8% of the total population mostly endorsing evangelical Protestant denominations that were introduced by American missionaries at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries, they are heavily concentrated in northern Luzon and southern Mindanao. The Philippine Independent Church is a notable independent Catholic denomination. Iglesia Ni Cristo is a notable Unitarian and Restorationist denomination in the country and are mostly concentrated at central Luzon. Islam is the second largest religion. The Muslim population of the Philippines was reported as 5.57% of the total population according to census returns in 2010 although a 2012 report by the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos estimates it at 11%. The majority of Muslims live in the Bangsamoro region. Most practice Sunni Islam under the Shafi'i school. An unknown number of Filipinos are irreligious, but they may form as much as 20% of the population. Catholicism's historic dominance is steadily declining, with about 9% of adherents considering leaving their church. An estimated 2% of the total population practice Philippine traditional religions, whose practices and folk beliefs are often syncretized with Christianity and Islam. 
Buddhism is practiced by around 2% of the population, and is concentrated among Filipinos of Chinese descent. The remaining population is divided between a number of religious groups, including Hindus, Jews, and Baha'is. There are an increasing number of private health providers and, as of 2009, 67.1% of healthcare came from private expenditures while 32.9% was from government. In 2013, total expenditures on the health sector was 3.8% of GDP, below the WHO target of 5%. Health expenditure represented about 6.1% of total government spending. Per capita total expenditure at average exchange rate was 52 US dollars. The budget allocation for healthcare in 2010 was 28 billion or 310 per person but had an increase in budget in 2014 with a record high in the collection of taxes from the House Bill 5727. There are an estimated 90,370 physicians or one per every 833 people, 480,910 nurses, 43,220 dentists, and one hospital bed per every 769 people. Retention of skilled practitioners is a problem. 70% of nursing graduates go overseas to work. The Philippines is the biggest supplier of nurses for export. In 2001 there were about 1,700 hospitals, of which about 40% were government-run and 60% private. Cardiovascular diseases account for more than 25% of all deaths. According to official estimates, 1,965 cases of human immunodeficiency virus were reported in 2003, of which 636 had developed acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Despite the increase of HIV-AIDS cases from 12,000 in 2005 to 17,450 as of April 2014 with 5,965 people who were under antiretroviral therapy, the country is still a low HIV prevalence country with less than 0.1% of the adult population estimated to be HIV positive. The Philippines has a simple literacy rate of 95.6%, with 95.1% for males and 96.1% for females. The Philippines had a functional literacy rate of 86.45%, with 84.2% for males and 88.7% for females in 2008. Spending on education accounted for 16.11% in the national budget proposed for 2015. The Commission on Higher Education lists 2,180 higher education institutions, 607 of which are public and 1,573 private. Classes start in June and end in March. The majority of colleges and universities follow a semester calendar from June to October and November to March. There are a number of foreign schools with study programs. A six-year elementary and four-year high school education is mandatory with an additional two years being added in 2013. Several government agencies are involved with education. The Department of Education covers elementary, secondary, and non-formal education. The Technical Education and Skills Development Authority administers post-secondary, middle-level education training and development. The Commission on Higher Education supervises college and graduate academic programs and degrees as well as regulates standards in higher education. In 2004, Madaris were mainstreamed in 16 regions nationwide, 
mainly in Muslim areas in Mindanao under the auspices and program of the Department of Education. Public universities are all nonsectarian entities, and are further classified as state universities and colleges or local colleges and universities. The University of the Philippines, a system of eight constituent universities, is the national university system of the Philippines. Philippine culture is a combination of Eastern and Western cultures. The Philippines exhibits aspects found in other Asian countries with a Malay heritage, yet its culture also displays a significant number of Spanish and American influences. Traditional festivities known as barrio fiestas to commemorate the feast days of patron saints are common, these community celebrations are times for feasting, music, and dancing. The ATI Atihan, Morians, and Sinulog festivals are a couple of the most well known. Some traditions, however, are changing or gradually being forgotten due to modernization. The Bayanahan Philippine National Folk Dance Company has been lauded for preserving many of the various traditional folk dances found throughout the Philippines. They are famed for their iconic performances of Philippine dances such as the Tini Kling and Sing Kill that both feature clashing bamboo poles. One of the most visible Hispanic legacies is the prevalence of Spanish names and surnames among Filipinos. A Spanish name and surname, however, does not necessarily denote Spanish ancestry. This peculiarity, unique among the people of Asia, came as a result of a colonial edict by Governor General Narciso Claveria y Zaldua, which ordered the systematic distribution of family names and implementation of Hispanic nomenclature on the population. The names of many streets, towns, and provinces are also in Spanish. The common use of the English language is an example of the American impact on Philippine society. It has contributed to the ready acceptance and influence of American pop cultural trends. This affinity is seen in Filipinos' love of fast food and American film and music. Fast food outlets are found on many street corners. American global fast food chain stalwarts have entered the market, but local fast food chains like Goldilocks and most notably Jollibee, the leading fast food chain in the country, have emerged and compete successfully against their foreign rivals. Spanish architecture has left an imprint in the Philippines in the way many towns were designed around a central square or plaza mayor, but many of the buildings bearing its influence were demolished during World War II. Some examples remain, mainly among the country's churches, government buildings, and universities. Four Philippine Baroque churches are included in the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the San Agustin Church in Manila, Bao A Church in Ilocos Norte, Nuestra Señora de la Asuncion Church in Ilocos Sur, and Santo Tomas de Villanueva Church in Iloilo. Vigan in Ilocos Sur is also known for the many Hispanic-style houses and buildings preserved there. The American occupation in 1898 introduced a new breed of architectural structures in the Philippines. This led to the construction of government buildings and art deco theaters. During the American period, some semblance of city planning using the architectural designs and master plans by Daniel Burnham was done on the portions of the city of Manila. Part of the Burnham's plan was the construction of government buildings that resembled Greek or neoclassical architecture. In Iloilo, a lot of the colonial edifices constructed during the American occupation in the country can still be seen. Commercial buildings, houses, and churches in that era are abundant in the city and especially in Calle Real. However, Certain areas of the country like Batons have slight differences as both Spanish and Filipino ways of architecture assimilated differently due to the climate. 
limestones and coral were used as building materials. Ijangs or Ivatan castles were the primary shelter of the people prior to the Spanish conquest of the whole Philippines. Philippine music has evolved rapidly due to the different influences stemming from colonialism under other countries. Before the Spanish conquest of the islands, most music was reminiscent of, or heavily influenced by, nature. Some examples of this tribal music is Coyuno Tibulal of the Tiboli and Ombojado of the Ifugeo. This genre is often accompanied by gong music and one well-known instrument is the kolintang. During the Spanish era rondalia music, where traditional string orchestra mandolin type instruments were used, was widespread. In the Philippines, rondalia refers to any group of stringed instruments that are played using a plectrum or pick. Filipino instruments are made from indigenous Philippine wood plectrums, or picks, are made from tortoise shell. Other stringed instruments composing the standard Filipino rondala are the 14-string banduria found only in the Philippines, the laud, the octavina, the 12-string guitar, the ukulele, the bajo de unas or double bass, the guitar in mexicano, and other Filipino-made instruments modeled and developed after the guitar. Hirana and Kundaman are prevalent during this time wherein these songs are often used in courtship rituals. Marcelo Adonai, Simplicio Solis, Diego C. Perez, José Canseco and Dona Dolores Paterno were some of the recognized musicians in this era. Nowadays, American pop culture has a heavy hold on the Filipinos that evolved from the Spanish times when the American occupation happened. Along with Korean pop, these two are dominating the recent music scene in media. However, the revival of Spanish influence folk music has been possible thanks to the different choir groups coming in and going out of the country, such as the Philippine Madrigal Singers. Just like the evolution of Philippine music, dance as well has been in constant change. Prior to colonial rule, the Philippines has a wide array of ethnic dances from different tribal groups. This is due mainly to the fact that Philippines is an archipelago thus the different varieties of dance developed. Both Luzon and Visayas, at first, were more akin to tribal movements until the Spanish came. Mindanao represents more of an array of Muslim-inspired dances and Spanish influence was minimal in the region of Samboanga. Universal dances in the Philippines are found at societal functions such as rituals, mimicry, life cycle, and parties. During the Spanish era, most dances are accompanied by rondalia music usually with 14-string bandurias that the Filipinos invented or by other type of stringed instruments that locally evolved into the culture as well. One famous dance that is well known is called the Teeny Kling, where a band of rondalia musicians play along with the percussive beat of the two bamboo poles. It usually starts with men and women acting a scene about how rural townsfolk mingle. The dancers then graze through the clashing of the bamboo poles held on opposite sides. The end displays the paired bamboo poles crossing each other. The Muslim version of this where bamboo poles are also used is called the singkil. Nowadays, in the modern and postmodern time periods, Dances vary from the delicate ballet up to the more street-oriented styles of break dancing to name a few. Pottery and weaving are among the very first art forms showcasing Filipino artistic design and are evident from cave dwellings all over the country. Among these are mostly anthropomorphic earthenware jars dating from C5 BC to 225 AD. Weaving was mostly done by women using fibers from abaca, pineapple, cotton, and bark to make clothes, rugs and hats. Baskets were mostly utilized to carry grain and other foods. 
Early Philippine sculpture is characterized by frontal nudity. One of the earliest forms are the bilals by the Ifugao people which serve as an assurance for bountiful harvests. The original function of these sculptures are related to the ceremonies and beliefs of the tribes who created them. Arab and Russian missionaries also brought beveled type of carvings in the form of okil. The beginnings of this sculpture type started with the Islamization of Sulu. The Spanish colonization of the country did not hinder Filipinos creating sculptures for objects of adoration. During this time, sculptures of deities and saints were used to teach Filipinos Christian doctrines. During the American colonialism, worshippers of faith were not discouraged to sculpt in order to adorn churches. Filipinos' first exposure to painting happened when Spain conquered the Philippines and these were used as religious propaganda often displayed in churches. However, as education progressed and wealth increased, more and more artists started to shift from the traditional religious motifs to a more secular pattern of imagery. Paintings of early modernist painters such as Damian Domingo often still had a religious association but the art of Juan Luna and Felix Hidalgo showed a trend towards political statement. The first Philippine national artist Fernando Amor Solo used postmodernism to produce paintings that illustrated aspects of Philippine culture, while other artists such as Fernando Zobel used both realistic and abstract techniques. In the modern period, the integration of architecture in the Art Deco style happened. Many of these examples can be seen in statues all over the country especially in public parks and spaces. As a general description, the distinct value system of Filipinos is rooted primarily in personal alliance systems, especially those based in kinship, obligation, friendship, religion, and commercial relationships. Filipino values are, for the most part, centered around maintaining social harmony, motivated primarily by the desire to be accepted within a group. The main sanction against diverging from these values are the concepts of hiaya, roughly translated as a sense of shame, and amor proprio or self-esteem. Social approval, acceptance by a group, and belonging to a group are major concerns. Caring about what others will think, say, or do, are strong influences on social behavior among Filipinos. Other elements of the Filipino value system are optimism about the future, pessimism about present situations and events, concern and care for other people, the existence of friendship and friendliness, the habit of being hospitable, religious nature respectfulness to self and others, respect for the female members of society, the fear of God, and abhorrence of acts of cheating and thievery. Filipino cuisine has evolved over several centuries from its Malayo-Polynesian origins to become a mixed cuisine with many Hispanic, Chinese, American, and other Asian influences that have been adapted to local ingredients and the Filipino palate to create distinctively Filipino dishes. Dishes range from the very simple, like a meal of fried salted fish and rice, to the elaborate, such as the paellas and casados created for fiestas. Popular dishes include lechon, adobo, sinigang, kerkayer, tapa, crispy pata, pancit, lumpia, and halo halo. Some common local ingredients used in cooking are calamansi, coconuts, saba, mangoes, ubet, milkfish, and fish sauce. Filipino taste buds tend to favor robust flavors, but the cuisine is not as spicy as those of its neighbors. Unlike many of their Asian counterparts, Filipinos do not eat with chopsticks, they use Western cutlery. However, 
possibly due to rice being the primary staple food and the popularity of a large number of stews and main dishes with broth in Filipino cuisine, the main pairing of utensils seen at the Filipino dining table is that of spoon and fork, not knife and fork. The traditional way of eating with the hands known as kamayan was previously more often seen in the less urbanized areas. However, due to the various Filipino restaurants that introduced Filipino food to people of other nationalities as well as to Filipino urbanites, kamayan fast became popular. This recent trend also sometimes incorporates the boodle fight concept, wherein banana leaves are used as giant plates on top of which rice portions and Filipino viands are placed all together for a filial, friendly, and slash or communal kamayan feasting. Philippine mythology has been handed down primarily through the traditional oral folk literature of the Filipino people. While each unique ethnic group has its own stories and myths to tell, Hindu and Spanish influences can nonetheless be detected in many cases. Philippine mythology mostly consists of creation stories or stories about supernatural creatures, such as the Aswang, the Mananangal, the Diwata slash Encanto, and nature. Some popular figures from Philippine mythologies are Maria Makiling, Lam Ang, and the Sari Monarch. Philippine literature comprises works usually written in Filipino, Spanish, or English. Some of the most known were created from the 17th to 19th century. Adarna, for example, is a famous epic about an eponymous magical bird allegedly written by Jose de la Cruz or Hugh Zengsisi. Francisco Balogdas, the poet and playwright who wrote Florenti et Laura, is recognized as a preeminent writer in the Filipino language. Jose Rizal wrote the novels Nali Mi Tanher and El Filibuster Ismo. He is considered a national hero. His depiction of the injustices of Spanish rule, and his death by firing squad, inspired other Filipino revolutionaries to seek independence. Several Filipino writers were awarded National Artist of the Philippines such as N. V. M. Gonzalez, Amado V. Hernandez, Francisco Arslana, Nick Joaquin, F. Sionil Jose and many more. Philippine media uses mainly Filipino and English. Other Philippine languages, including various Visayan languages are also used especially in radio due to its ability to reach remote rural locations that might otherwise not be serviced by other kinds of media. The dominant television networks ABS-CBN, GMA, and TV5 also have extensive radio presence. The entertainment industry is vibrant and feeds broadsheets and tabloids with an unending supply of details about celebrities and sensationalist daily scandals. Drama and fantasy shows are anticipated as are Latin telenovelas, Asian novellas, and anime. Daytime television is dominated by game shows, variety shows, and talk shows such as Eat Bulaga and its Showtime. Philippine cinema has a long history and is popular domestically, but has faced increasing competition from American, Asian and European films. Critically acclaimed directors and actors include Lino Braca and Nora Honor for films like Manila, S.A.M.G.A. Kuko N.G. Liwanag and Himala. In recent years it has become common to see celebrities flitting between television and movies and then moving into politics provoking concerns. Salon de Pertiera was the first introduced moving picture on January 1st. 1897 in the Philippines. All films were all in Spanish since Philippine cinema was first introduced during the final years of the Spanish era of the country. Antonio Ramos was the first known movie producer. He used the Lumiere cinematograph when he filmed Panorama de Manila, Fiesta de Quiapo, Puente de España, and Eschinas Calle Jeras. 
Meanwhile, José Nepomuceno was dubbed as the father of Philippine cinema. Dubbed as the father of Philippine cinema, his work marked the start of cinema as an art form in the Philippines. His first film produced was entitled Dalagang Bukid in 1919. Film showing resumed in 1900 during the American period. Walgra, a British entrepreneur, opened the Cine Walgra at No. 60 Calle Santa Rosa in Intramuros. It was also during this time that a movie market was formally created in the country along with the arrival of silent movies. These silent films were always accompanied by gramophone, a piano, a quartet, or a 200-man choir. During the Japanese occupation, filmmaking was put on hold. Nonetheless, it was continued on 1930s up until 1945 replacing the Hollywood market with Japanese films but met with little success. Post-war 1940s and the 1950s were known as the first golden age of Philippine cinema with the resurgence of mostly Visayan films through Lapu Lapu Pictures. During the 1960s, James Bond movies, Bomba Pictures, and an era of musical films, produced mostly by Sampaguita Pictures, dominated the cinema. The second golden age occurred from 1970s to early 1980s. It was during this era that filmmakers ceased to produce pictures in black and white. A rise in Hollywood films dominated theater sales during the late 1980s until the 2000s. The dawn of this era saw a dramatic decline of the mainstream Philippine movie industry. In the year 2009, However, presence of box office films in the Philippine box office has surged. The mid-2010s also saw broader commercial success of films produced by independent studios. Various sports and pastimes are popular in the Philippines including basketball, boxing, volleyball, football, American football, both codes of rugby football, badminton, karate, taekwondo, billiards, ten-pin bowling, chess, and sipa. Motocross, cycling, and mountaineering are also becoming popular. Basketball is played at both amateur and professional levels and is considered to be the most popular sport in the Philippines. In 2010, Manny Pacquiao was named Fighter of the Decade for the 2000s by the Boxing Writers Association of America, World Boxing Council, and World Boxing Organization. The national martial art and sport of the country is Arnie's, Escrima, or Cali in some regions. The Philippines has participated in the Summer Olympic Games since 1924 and was the first country in Southeast Asia to compete and win a medal. The country had competed in every Summer Olympic Games since then, except when they participated in the American-led boycott of the 1980 Summer Olympics. The Philippines is also the first tropical nation to compete at the Winter Olympic Games debuting in the 1972 edition. Traditional Philippine games such as Luksung Baka, Patanturo, Pico, and Tumbang Preso are still played primarily as children's games among the youth. Sunka is a traditional native Philippine board game. Card games are popular during festivities, with some, including Pusoy and Tongits, being used as a form of illegal gambling. Mahjong is played in some Philippine communities. Sabong or cockfighting is another popular entertainment especially among Filipino men, and existed prior to the arrival of the Spanish. Antonio Pigafetta, Magellan's chronicler, first documented this pastime in the Kingdom of Taytay. The yo-yo, a popular toy in the Philippines, was introduced in its modern form by Pedro Flores with its name coming from the Ilocano language. Click on a colored area to see an article about English in that country or region.
values cuisine literature media cinema sports games notes citations bibliography